I'm on Etsy and I've typed in the phrase space blueprint and that gets me back about 4,000 results. It's a pretty popular genre. Now there's other types of blueprints that you can do as well. But I just, I want to focus on space blueprints because they're public domain pictures for the most part and they're really easy to do. Here's an example of one. It's the Mercury spacecraft blueprint. And I'm just going to click on this thing so you can see it. It's a picture of the Mercury spacecraft and then there's these little pieces of text with arrows sort of or lines that point to the text. So that's a very popular style of artwork. Here's a space shuttle print and there's no lines but there's technical specifications down at the bottom, tech, tech specs basically. Here's another one. This is a SpaceX rocket and it's got these little pointers pointing to the technical specifications. Here's a Saturn one rocket and then there's a picture on a blueprint background and then it's got the different text on it. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to make a drawing like this. And what you can do, because it's a vector, is you can make this thing absolutely massive. And I mean like massive, massive. Like you could put it on the side of a building, it's so big. We're talking 10 feet, 12 feet, 15 feet, if that's what you'd like to do. So I've got a little bonus tip at the end on how you could make it a physical product that is so big, it would take up the entire side of a wall. And it's pretty cool because then you can sell these for kids' rooms, man caves, even commercial applications. It doesn't need to be a space blueprint, but I'll break down this process in this video. I really love space stuff, so this will be a fun one to go through. Okay, so at first glance, this can look like it's really technically complicated here. We've got the F1 engine for the Saturn V. We've got a pretty technical specification drawing here and then we've got a whole bunch of text on it so the the easiest way to start is just to find the actual image so for example if you wanted to find this image you would just google f1 engine for saturn 5 like this is not pardon the pun this is not rocket science <laughs> uh, but it is so here i've just googled it saturn v f1 rocket uh, engine rocket booster blueprint and what i'm looking for is a wikipedia result. So as I look through all of this, the third result is the Wikipedia one. So I'm just going to click on that. And now I'm going to scroll down on this page and I'm going to look for the Wikipedia drawing. So I'm just looking along the right hand side for the technical specification drawing. There it is. So here's the F1 rocket engine component. I click on that. There's the actual picture. And if I scroll on down a tiny bit, I can see more details, public domain. Okay, so I'm in Inkscape, and if you've never heard of Inkscape, it's a free vector software tool. There's menus along the left, there's menus along the top, and there's menus along the right. And then down at the bottom, there's this cool color palette that you can scroll along and you can pick different colors. So I'm going to just open up my original image now of my rocket. I'm just going to go to File and then Open. Okay, so my image is now sitting here. Now I'm just gonna make the background transparent so you can see what I mean about this being an original image. I'm gonna to go to File, Document Properties, and then there's a little checkerboard background. I'm gonna select that. So here we've got a white image. And so I'm gonna make this a vector and I'm gonna do it for two reasons. The first reason is to remove the white. So I'm just going to trace the black paths. And then the second, reason I would do that is so I could scale it up and make it really, really large if I wanted to without it becoming pixelated. So to vectorize this image, it's very easy to do. I'll go to path, trace bitmap, and now it's going to pop up with this little screen over here. And you can change the brightness if you want. You can make it really light or really dark. I'm just going to make it about 68 and then I'll click update and then I'll click OK. It's now going to take a look and it's going to do a path through here and now I've vectorized the image. Now it's a judgment call. If you make it too light, some of the top won't show up. If you make it too dark, then the rocket down below will be completely black. So I'm happy with the way that looks. As I delete out the original image, we can see now this is our vector that we're dealing with. And it's, I can live with the rocket being dark 
I'm just going to scroll in here. We can see it's got lots of texture on it, but I'm okay with that for the purposes of this illustration. You may want to find a higher quality original PNG file. You may want to work in Photoshop or Affinity, you know, photo, that sort of thing, or, or some sort of photo software to clean up this image before you vectorize it. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to run with this one as is. So now I'm going to just save this, just file save as my vector in my folder. So I'm just going to call this Saturn V Rocket Big, and I will save it now as an SVG file. I don't need to export it to a PNG or anything like that. I'm working right in Inkscape on this, so I can just use this as is. Now I'm just going to go File Close, and I'm going to open up a new template to work on my actual design. Okay, so now I've got this page and I want to change the page. Let's say the client's asked for a really large poster. Let's say they've asked for three feet wide by say six feet tall. So I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, and then I'm going to change the width here. And this is default to millimeters, but I'm just going to change it to inches. And I'm going to change it to three feet wide, so that's 36 inches wide. And let's say it's uh, six feet tall. So six feet tall would be 72 inches. So I'm just making this up, but we'll go 36 by 72 inches. And, oh, that's the height there. And we'll click OK. And now we can see we've got quite a large palette here to work with. So that, I'm just going to scroll out on it, but we can see that's, say, the design. Actually, that's a bit too tall for what we're looking for. So I'm just going to go File, Document Properties. Let's make this instead. We'll do three feet wide by, say, five feet tall, which is 60. Just make it a little bit more normal. Okay, so let's say that's a custom size that they're looking for, okay? Now we're going to go File, Import, and we can import the uh, actual SVG. But first, before I do that, I'm going to make a shape and just make the background a blueprint color. So I'm just going to draw a shape here, and that's going to be my layer. And then I'm going to go to Layer, Add a Layer. So now I'm on the second layer. And now I'm going to import my image. File, Import. And I'm going to pull in my image here, which is my SVG file. And it's going to say, include the SVG as an editable object. I'll say yes. So now I'm going to scale up. Now, it may come in as tiny, and you might go, uh-oh, I didn't do a good job of making it big enough. But remember, it's a vector. You can make it as large as you want, and it won't get pixelated. So I'm just going to hold down the Control key here on the corner and just scale it up as big as I need to make it. I could have made this 10 times larger, and it would have been just fine. It won't get any uh, more pixelated. Okay, so let's say, for example, I'm going to put this in here like this. Now, you might be saying, whoa, whoa, whoa some of the text is outside of the design but that's okay because here's the key i'm going to just make this white to start so i'm just going to scroll over here on my color palette and i'm just going to click the white button and that instantly now changes this to white and then here's the key i'm going to rewrite all of the text i don't like the way the text looks i'm going to make it my own and so this is the key now with these text specs drawings is you can rewrite the text make it slightly different and then as a result even if you know somebody else is saying well that's my design you actually make it your own design the background is different you vectorized the image you've redone the text and as a result now you can make this your own the reason i say that as well is see how these the text doesn't look particularly well traced inkscape does not do a great job of tracing text perfectly. So what I'm going to do, for example, where this says gas generator, I'm going to click on edit paths by node. And I can see there, there's, these are all nodes, these are all vectors. Well, I can select that area and I can just delete it. I'm just highlighting and deleting. So now when I go back, it's completely gone. Gas generator is not there. So now I can type in, using the text tool, I can type in gas generator. Now I've used font from a previous, uh, previous project here, so I just need to change it. 
I'm going to change it to Futura. So I've typed in my font, I've got it Futura, and now I'm just going to click white down below and that will make my text white and it's also standalone as well. So now I can move this around if I want and I can place it exactly where I like. So something like here where this is you know, changed, I can make this different. I can change fuel duct. I can do high pressure. I can make it all inside this design. So I'm going to go through now and redo all of the text in this design and I'll just jump ahead here in the video. Okay, so here's an example of where I've updated the text now. So you can see it's a lot higher quality than it is up here. If I were just to leave this text, it'd be pretty low grade. Now the other thing I want to point out are the arrows or the little sliders here that go into the actual design. You can just remove those as well. So we'll do this thrust chamber one. I'm just going to click on edit paths by node and then I'm going to click anywhere inside the design and that's going to highlight all of the nodes here. I'm going to scroll right in and then I'm just going to highlight the actual path here and then I can delete, just hit the delete key. So now I can replace this with an actual line. So I'm going to go up here to the Bezier and I've got a couple options. I can do a line where when you, like, I don't know if you've ever used the Bezier pen, but you can do like these wavy squirrely lines and they can be kind of difficult to navigate. So what I would suggest you do is just over here on the fourth one in, it says create a sequence of straight lines because that's all we want is just a straight line, right? So I'm just going to use this fourth option, straight line, and I'm just going to draw a straight line. And then like, that's it. So I'm just going to hit enter now and that becomes my line. Okay, now you can make this line bigger if you want. You can just drag this and make it a bit fatter if you like, that sort of thing. You can modify it. Let's say I wanted to make it like that and then I can move it into position. Now you might be saying, well, how do I make this actually white? It's pretty easy to do. This is a line and at the very, very bottom left, there's fill is white and stroke is black. The reason this is showing up as black is because of the stroke. So when I click stroke, and that just means it's the outside of the item. And because it's so thin, the entire item looks black. So I'm gonna click the stroke button and that just gets me to this neat little triangle. And then from here, I can just move this around. And you'll notice as I move this inside the triangle, the actual item is changing color. So I'm just going to move this to white right over to the end. And that creates a white line there. And then I can just close this out. So now I've got a line that's pointing right into the item. And I can move this around if I want to. I can simply select it and then I can move this wherever I want. So this is nice because you're working in a non-destructive capacity other than of course when you remove the items off of the blueprint. Okay, so you get an idea of what the final product would look like here. I've got a you know, a title at the top and then I've got my text that I'm starting to work on and I would be pointing it to the different areas. I do want to point out as well, you could do this in Photoshop. You could do this in Affinity Photo. There's other software tools you could use. I'm just showing you how to do this in Inkscape if you're making a really large design and, you know, to each their own, right? So I know sometimes people will say, well, why are you using it in that you know, in, in that program instead of this program, Inkscape is free. So if you don't have Photoshop or Affinity Photo or any of these, you know, higher end photo software pieces, you can just use Inkscape and it's free. So I had mentioned at the start of this video that there's an option for you to print really, really large posters for say a kid's room or maybe a living room, that sort of thing. And the website that I'd like to talk about is thisnew.com. So this really only applies if you're interested in making really, really large posters. Now I'm going to put a link to this website in the video description below. And just a heads up, it is an affiliate link. And what that means is that if you click on the link and then you wind up buying any product on this new, I would receive a small commission and you would be helping support this channel. So I'm gonna go into products and then I'm going to scroll on down to home and living. And then inside of that, there's a bunch of options. And the one that I want to select here is called wall art. What I really like about this new is there's a whole bunch of different types of wall art. There's wooden paint, like wooden prints, metal signs. Here's one that says iron plate. 
This is a wooden sign. And I'm looking right here, custom poster self-adhesive, 136 inches by 91 inches. So that's massive. There's a few different options here on sizes. You can check them out. I'm gonna select this big one, 136 by 91. This is 2.3 meters high by three, almost three and a half meters wide. To make this is really simple. There's actually a mock-up here as well so you can see how big it is. To design this is actually really easy. You just click the design button here and then it will open up this design portal and then you have two tabs here. One is about the actual product itself and then this is the design piece here. So to design, you just select the image button and then you can upload the image. Now the minimum pixels it wants is 16299 by 10866. So if you know that's the size that maybe your client is looking for, or maybe you'd like to sell these, then that's the size you would create inside of Inkscape when you first start. So I've gone back and I've just rejigged the image to make it 16299 by 10866, and that's what I'm going to import now into this. I do want to point out, these are really large files. So if you're using a phone or if you have a really wimpy computer, this won't work very well. But if you have a higher end computer or even just a middle of the road computer, this can be a really nice option if you're selling unique items for say a kid's room or even commercial applications, really large posters. Okay, so we can see here now it's loaded in. It says the print quality is good. Another option you can do actually is you could just import the images individually. You can import more than one image and actually layer them on top of each other and then use the text feature and you could actually type in text on here as well. So you could actually create this entire image right inside of this now as well. I'm gonna do, to, do a tutorial about that someday. Okay, so here it is. I can now select the actual mock-up on the bottom right-hand side. So this is nice, you can take this picture now if you were say selling this online, it would give you the dimensions. And then it also gives you a nice mock-up here on what it would look like inside of someone's house or maybe at the airport or something like that. So I hope you found that helpful. I really like this new and I really like making space tech specs, but it doesn't need to be space. You could make it for any sort of idea that, you know, any sort of product that's got little text pieces that point to something. It could be an engine, a car, an airplane, a tank. There's all sorts of, you know, endless possibilities. So I hope you guys found that helpful as always. Uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment or a question, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Thank you so, so much for watching.